but outside of the realm of electoral politics, I still see people the way I saw them when I made that speech full of contradictions. And there are some regional differences, but basically folks care about their families. They care about having meaningful work, they care about making sure their kids have more opportunity than they did. They want to be safe, they want to feel like things are fair. And whoever leads the DNC and any candidate with the Democratic brand going forward. I want them to feel as if they can reach out and find that common ground speak to all of America. And that requires some organization. And you're right that and I said this in my earlier remarks that what I was able to do during my campaigns. I wasn't able to do during midterms. It's not that we didn't put in time and effort into it. I spent time and effort into it, but the coalition I put together didn't always turn out to be transferable. And the challenge is that you know, some of that just has to do with the fact that when you're in the party in power and people are going through hard times like they were in 2010, they're going to punish. To some degree, the President's party regardless of what organizational work is done. Some of it has to do with just some deep standing traditional challenges for Democrats. Like during off-year election, the electorate is older and we do better with a younger electorate. But we know those things are true, and I didn't crack the code on that. And if other people have ideas about how to do that even better, I'm all for it. So with respect to the electors, I'm not going to wade into that issue because, again, It's the American people's job, 
and now the elector's job to decide my successor. It is not my job to decide my successor. And I have provided people with a lot of information about what happened during the course of the election. But more importantly, the candidates themselves, I think. talked about their beliefs and their vision for America. The president-elect, I think, has been very explicit about what he cares about and what he believes in. So it's not in my hands now, it's up to them. Question, what about long term about the electoral college? President Obama Long term with the respect to the Electoral College the Electoral College is a vestige. It's a carryover from an earlier vision of how our federal government was going to work that put a lot of premium on states. And it used to be that the Senate was not elected directly, it was through state legislatures. And it's the same type of thinking that gives Wyoming two senators with about half a million people. And California with 33 million get the same too. So there are some structures in our political system. As envisioned by the founders, that sometimes are going to disadvantage Democrats. But the truth of the matter is, is that, if we have a strong message, if we're speaking to what the American people care about, typically the popular vote and the electoral college vote will align. And I guess part of my overall message here as I leave for the holidays is that if we look for one explanation. Or one silver bullet or one easy fix for our politics, then we're probably going to be disappointed.
there are just a lot of factors in what's happened not just over the last few months. But over the last decade that has made both politics and governance more challenging. And I think everybody has raised legitimate questions and legitimate concerns. I do hope that we all just take some time, take a breath this is certainly what I'm. going to advise Democrats to just reflect a little bit more about how can we get to a place. Where people are focused on working together based on at least some common set of facts. How can we have a conversation about policy that doesn't demonize each other? How can we channel what I think is the basic decency and goodness of the American people so it reflects itself in our politics? as opposed to it being so polarized and so nasty that, in some cases, you have voters and elected officials who have more confidence and faith in a foreign adversary than they have in their neighbors. And those go to some bigger issues. How is it that we have some voters or some elected officials who think that Michelle Obama's healthy eating initiative and school nutrition program is a great threat to democracy. Then our government going after the press if they're issuing a story they don't like. I mean, that's an issue that I think we've got to wrestle with and we will. People have asked me how do you feel after the election and so forth. And I say, well, look, this is a clarifying moment. It's a useful reminder that voting counts, politics counts. What the president-elect is going to be doing is going to be very different than what I was doing.
and I think people will be able to compare and contrast and make judgments about what worked for the American people. And I hope that, building off the progress we've made, that what the president-elect is proposing works. What I can say with confidence is that what we've done works. That I can prove. I can show you. Where we were in 2008 and I can show you where we are now, and you can't argue that we're not better off. We are. And for that. I thank the American people and, more importantly, I thank well. Not more importantly as importantly I was going to say Josh Ernest for doing such a great job. For that, I thank the American people. I thank the men and women in uniform who serve. I haven't gotten to the point yet where I've been overly sentimental. I will tell you, when I was doing my last Christmas party fought Olin many of you have participated in these. They're pretty long right at the end of the line, the President's Marine Corps band comes in. Those who had been performing, and I take a picture when them. And it was the last time that I was going to take a picture with my Marine Corps band after an event, and I got a little choked up. Now, I was in front of Marines, so I had to, like, tamp it down. But it was just one small example of all the people who have contributed to our success. I'm responsible for where we've screwed up. The successes are widely shared with all the amazing people who have been part of this administration. Thank you, everybody. Meli Kaliki Maka
Barack Obama. Final Presidential Press Conference. Deliver January 18, 2017, White House, Washington, D. C. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me start out by saying that I was sorely tempted to wear a tan suit today for my last press conference. But Michelle, whose fashion sense is a little better than mine, tells me that's not appropriate in January. I covered a lot of the ground that I would want to cover in my farewell address last week. So I'm just going to say a couple of quick things before I start taking questions. First, we have been in touch with the Bush family today, after hearing about President George. H. W. Bush and Barbara Bush being admitted to the hospital this morning. They have not only dedicated their lives to this country. They have been a constant source of friendship and support and good counsel for Michelle and me over the years. They are as fine a couple as we know. And so we want to send our prayers and our love to them. Really good people. Second thing I want to do is to thank all of you. Some of you have been covering me for a long time folks like Christy and Wynn. Some of you I've just gotten to know. We have traveled the world together. We've hit a few singles, a few doubles together. I've offered advice that I thought was pretty sound, like don't do stupid, stuff. and even when you complained about my long answers.
I just want you to know that the only reason they were long was because you asked six part questions. But I have enjoyed working with all of you. That does not, of course, mean that I've enjoyed every story that you have filed. But that's the point of this relationship. You're not supposed to be sycophants, you're supposed to be skeptics. You're supposed to ask me tough questions. You're not supposed to be complimentary, but you're supposed to cast a critical eye on folks. Who hold enormous power and make sure that we are accountable to the people who sent us here. And you have done that. And you've done it, for the most part. In ways that I could appreciate for fairness even if I didn't always agree with your conclusions. And having you in this building has made this place work better. It keeps us honest. It makes us work harder. It made us think about how we are doing what we do and whether or not. We're able to deliver on what's been requested by our constituents. And for example, every time you've asked why haven't you cured Ebola yet? Or why is that still that hole in the gulf, it has given me the ability to go back to my team and say. Will you get this solved before the next press conference? I spent a lot of time in my farewell address talking about the state of our democracy. It goes without saying that essential to that is a free press. That is part of how this place, this country, this grand experiment in self-government has to work.
it doesn't work if we don't have a well-informed citizenry. And you are the conduit through which they receive the information about what's taking place in the halls of power.